So boys, I think we get rid of that. That's that's CKB tradition. I don't even know how that started, but I just know whose team I'm on. So it's nothing specifically personal, Monster. I just don't even know. I don't even know what that's about, brother. I don't know, but Israel, if Israel doesn't like the cob, I don't like the cob. That's been a good teammate. Well, Dan, it's obviously been a while since we've got to see you fight in this part of the world. So I guess, uh, how excited are you to, you know, be in Australia? Not obviously not home for you, but closer than Las Vegas or Milwaukee or any of these other places you've had to fight. Yeah, in. just listening to everyone cry about how far they had to come is just funny to me because it's like I have to do that every single time. So there's the sympathy. The sympathy tank here is absolutely empty, boys. Like, <laughs> I've had to fly to England, which is twice as far away as this. So, um, yeah, there's no real sympathy there. But it's cool to drag it down to this side of the world. Perth's crowd last time I was here was absolutely wild. They blew the roof off the place, and I'm expecting, um, I'm expecting the same thing come this fight. It's obviously been a while since we've got to see you fight. Uh, you've had fights booked, but, you know, you had to pull out for I've had fights just not in the UFC brother <laughs> <laughs> so I guess physically how are you feeling headed into this one nah I feel good I feel good body's at 100% um yeah it's just everything I feel like has come together in the last year so I'm, I'm just looking to showcase that all oh, besides getting tattoos how'd you spend your time oh that did take up a, a majority of my time um <clears throat> yeah getting tattoos but I have actually been in the gym um contrary to popular belief when you're injured, doesn't mean you stop training uh, altogether or you'd probably never get anything done. So I have been in the gym. I have had a camp in there, mixed in there. Uh, you know, I was only like a week out from the Bobby Green one, yeah. two weeks out. That was like my second or last firing session when I rebroke my arm. So I have had like a full training camp in there, even though I didn't get to get, go out there and, and put on a show for everyone. But, yeah, I'm just excited. And they match you up with Gamrot. Do you like this matchup, or were you hoping for someone else? I, know I love it, brother. I love that sexy little number he's got next to his name. That's all I'm coming for. Did you have to bring in anyone specific for this? Because, you know, his last few fights are very grappling heavy. Yeah, oh, it's just been a pest of a training camp, really. Just everyone <laughs> everyone diving at your legs for, for the, past, uh, the past six weeks. I can't say it's the most fun I've ever had, but getting hit in the head uh, a lot less is is, is probably it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. So are are you hoping like you know you you beat him, you get his number, and then all these names that I feel like you've been calling for for the last several years now they might be forced to take that fight. Oh, they'll have to, Baba. They'll have to. The the, the that the, that completely changes the direction. Like a lot of the big names in the division are all coming off losses. Um, Oliveira, Poirier, Gagey. Chandler, like all of these guys um, are going to want something I have, which is going to be a three-fight win streak. Uh, this is the, you've been in the UFC for 10 years now, I think, coming either relatively soon or within the next few months. And, you know, back then it was guys like you and James Tahuna and Mark Hunt. And, you know, you're the, kind of the last one standing from that part of the world with this new generation. So you, do you feel like a veteran in this sport in the UFC, or do you still feel like you're – uh, like the young guy, like fighting and making a name for himself. Yeah, oh, I feel like I did get into the UFC very young. Like I was only um, I think I just turned 24 when I first got into the UFC and I was not a well-developed fighter by any means in the imagination. So, yeah, I've had to do my development. Um, in the big show, I've had to do my development in the against the best guys in the world. And you're obviously like trying new things. Like some fights, some fight completely southpaw. Some fights, some... Orthodox, some fights, some wrestling, some fights, like all of these tools I've just been, but you, you've got no choice. If I would have just got into the UFC and stayed a, uh, man, I was a, like a forward pressure fighter that would wear you out, come forward and, and fight you on the inside, which is the dumbest move humanly possible as a six foot tall lightweight. So I've, um, yeah, I've just constantly been working on things and I feel like everything's just coming together now where I, where I can... Yeah, like showcase uh, a finished product. I feel like I just got good in the last year, so it's like, well, I'm going to quit now when I just got good. It doesn't make any sense. So do you watch your old fights and you're just like, oh, no. Dumbass. Dumbass. If I watch some old fights like, and I think about how crap I actually was, like I would wipe the floor of myself. Which fight do you watch that you were like, all right, that was the turning point? No, nah, they're they're all like trying new things, trying like trying different things, and I like, yeah, it's just, 
I feel like the level has definitely changed from what it was. Like even the guys um, from our gym coming through into con- contender series, like Cam Ralston, Navajo Sterling, Aaron Toe, like these boys are. S- they're completely well-rounded fighters. Their level, their level is there. You have to come into the UFC now, ready to compete with the elite of the division, and you have to be incre- incredibly well-rounded. Or it's a waste of time coming in altogether. I feel like ten years ago, like I come in as just a forward pressure striker. That you'd sink. You wouldn't even get into the UFC now. I feel like the level in the last ten years has grown exponentially. It's two more for me unrelated to this fight, but November 1st, they're going to implement those new rules with the 12 6 elbows. Man, I don't even follow the current rules, so like, <laughs> they're not a concern, they're not a, they're no concern to me, brother. Obviously, I, I assume I know your pick for the main event, but how do you see that fight actually playing out between Israel and Drikas? Oh, he's a oh, like, I'm usually chomping at um, Israel's heel, heels and sparring, trying to piss him off, but I'll just stay away from the club during this. Um, Fight camp, he's just hitting, hitting like an absolute truck. I just, I can't be bothered anymore. Hi, Dan. Why did you throw a drink at a guy at a rugby game the other day? I didn't, why didn't you ask us on the pub talk? We did a pub talk yesterday. You're going to do it now. I wanted you to have a crowd. No. Well, we <laughs> story time. Story time. No, nah, so Kai invited me to, to watch our, our home team, the Warriors. And as you know, I'm a very passionate uh, Warriors supporter. And there was another cob from the um, the other team, the Parramatta Eels, and he was standing up there, and he was rubbing it. He was rubbing it into the boys. The boys are getting pumped. I think we were twenty points down at um, before halftime, and every time they score, he's kind of rubbing it in. So I said, oh, "I'm going to start getting into this bloke." So we were sp- absolutely spraying each other. It was like the most fun I've, I've had the game in a long time. And then every time they scored, he was getting up. He was getting up and he was looking at me and he was going, how you like that, hangman? How you like that? Usually, if you've seen me before, usually I throw my shoes at people. But I have my Timberlands boots on and I don't throw my Timberlands. That's one rule. That's why I strapped them on. Um, so, yeah, I fired a drink at him. But he messaged me after and he's like, uh, I wanted to grab a picture with you. Where'd you go? And I said, oh, Kai made me leave. So I had to <laughs> – Kai, <laughs> Kai made me go home. But no, I'll message him. I'll follow him on Instagram now. I said, we'll go to the next game together and we can just spray each other, sit next to each other. It's a wonderful story. <laughs> hey, Dan, right here. Um, you signed a new UFC contract before this fight, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Was, did you get everything you feel you wanted out of that? Money, yeah. <laughs> Heaps of it. <laughs> So I know you had like talked in some other interviews, like Ariel and stuff. You love bare knuckle. Maybe that would be in your future. Do you think that's kind of pushing this to the wayside? Do you think you're here till you're done fighting now? Um, at the end of the day, like UFC is the big show, brother. Like you can go and fight anywhere else. Like regardless of regardless of the money, it's it's competing in the UFC, competing against the best guys is is where I want to be. Like that that will happen. I can fight being knuckle when I'm 40, mate. There's <laughs> that's my that's my retirement plan. Big fight, obviously, this weekend, Dan. But uh, could we get UFC Auckland back and back in the headlines again? How much do you want to see that happen over the next year or two? Potentially with this win, another main event. Oh, I think with a I think with a big win here, uh, we'll be dragging another event back to Auckland. Um, Pretty soon. Even though I said every time I every time I fight in Auckland, I say I'm never going to fight in Auckland ever again, just because the amount of stress it puts on my life. But we need to drag it down for another show. It's been too long. And uh, Dan, uh, a lot of people might not know, but when all the CKB boy, boys come out, a lot of the time Izzy dips into his own pocket to fly a lot of them out. Do you do something similar? Oh. <laughs> Making me look bad, Cobb. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't get paid anywhere near what Israel gets paid either, brother. <laughs> but nah, like, you yeah, I'll, I'll pay for a few tickets. I'll get a few tickets out, brother. Uh, and uh, well, speaking of uh, teammates you're close to, I mean, Aaron Toe, he's going to be on the Contender Series. You've been here with, with him for a very, very long time. You were coaching him. He's now a teammate of yours. Can you speak about that relationship? Yeah, I'm excited for like contender series is built for Aaron too. Like he's an action pack. You can't calm the kid down. Um, so he goes out there and he looks to take the guy's head off, uh, much like myself. I think that's why we get along so well. But yeah, it's it's built for him to go out there 
and to and to get a finish, he'll he'll be hunting it from the from the bell ringing. And uh, final one from me. After it's all said and done, obviously it's going to be a while with that new uh, deal. But how does Dan Hooker want to be remembered in mixed martial arts? Um, no, I'm not too concerned about. <laughs> you can't you can't control the, the you can't control how other people perceive you. You ask a thousand different people who Dan Hooker is, you're going to get a thousand different answers. I don't, don't know. I just got one. Right here, bro. So I was like slowly trying to scan. Uh, we <laughs> um, I just kind of wanted your thoughts on Jalen Turner's last performance because, like, it seemed like when he was in there with you, you guys were like willing to fight to the death. And then he sort of makes the mistake when he fights Mike Cano about walking away. He knocks. Yeah, him he's out, done he a few. That, um, he's done that a few times. Yeah, like uh, I definitely don't walk away. When when I yeah like what am I gonna knock the guy for having a heart like <laughs> yeah he's just too nice. Just one for me, uh, Dan. Uh, so recently you mentioned that this fight's gonna be exciting only because you're in it, and even Gamron has said he knows he needs to fight an exciting fight. Do you think he's gonna do that voluntarily and change his style, or you're no, gonna have God to force no. the matter? God no, God no. Nah, like yeah, I'm gonna make it exciting. There's. That's why they that's why they put this fight together because they're like who can drag who can drag it out of them and it's like I'll 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 press the action. And you mentioned recently that the fighters that were lined up for you were more like Benil Dariush and BSD and you wanted to fight in Perth and now you're fighting Gamrot, who is the higher ranked fighter. That's like a masterstroke from you now, waiting and and, and pu- you know pushing the matter. Genius, Cobb. Absolute <laughs> absolute genius. Uh, ten years doing anything is incredible. Ten years being a professional athlete is insane. Especially, there's ups, there's downs, there's wins where you get injured and you have to take time away. Over the course of those ten years, and especially during lower moments, what keeps you going? Um, nah, you just got a chip on your shoulder. You just got you just got something to prove. You just don't want to. You just know what you're finally capable of actually achieving. Um, I think that's all it is. And then, yeah, you didn't come this far to come this far. You're going to pull the handbrake up now. Nah, we're, we're going till the wheels fall off, baby. You mentioned uh, about looking at yourself when you walked into the UFC, your style and your literal ability. But looking at that man's mentality compared to your mentality now 10 years later, what do you see and what would you have told yourself? Oh, I definitely would have told that kid to, to dream bigger. I, ne- I never thought that, you know, MMA in New, Ze- uh, in New Zealand and Australia and the UFC would grow to the level that it has grown to. To like, I didn't even know it was when I got in the UFC. Like, it would have been a few months before that that I didn't even know that it was possible, you know, for, for someone from New Zealand training out of New Zealand to get a UFC contract. So to see how far it is now, we've had three UFC events in Auckland. We got um, a New Zealand champion. It's just wild how how big it's grown. Like I I just never anticipated that. Now, what is the big dream? Yeah, the belt, the belt, because you get pay per view points and heaps of money. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Dan. Uh, Longest layoff of your, of your career coming into this fight. Obviously, the physical benefits of that are clear. But mentally, what has this done for you? Do you feel like it's kind of reignited a bit of your passion for the sport, a bit of your hunger? Oh, yeah, just um, time away gives you, like, perspective, like, definitely, um, like, you appreciate it. You appreciate all these moments, but it's definitely, mate, you don't eat for a long time, you get hungry. Like, that's just, <laughs> there's no real rocket science to that. So I just haven't eaten for a long time, and I'm starving. Is, would this be the healthiest version of Dan Hooker we've seen in the Optin? Oh, I am good, but that's like that's that's blind luck. That's blind luck. You go into fights, some of them injured, some of them. Um, there's always something on going on behind the scenes. But I'm me. I'm experienced enough to know that you don't like. You actually don't know. You don't know till you wake up on the day and you get ready. Sometimes you feel like a million bucks. Sometimes you feel like dog shit. And I feel like I get my hand raised either way this weekend. You mentioned that sexy number next to uh, Gamrot's name. I like that. Yeah, just how far towards the front of the queue do you think a win 
puts you. Well, who else? Who else is there? Is that only other guys? Like you ain't getting you ain't getting a title shot off a loss. Like that's just if you want to be next in line, you're gonna have to like w- w- what now? Arman's next in line. Who's after that? Like the title fight's booked. Arman is um. It's like who's who's after that? And it'll be the winner of this weekend. Is the next guy. And just finally, congrats to you and your lovely wife on the uh, imminent new arrival. I'm wondering what um, that's doing for your motivation levels heading into this one. Yeah, that's a that's a bit of a funny one because you're like you can't really say you're doing it for your wife and kids because she couldn't care less whether you <laughs> <laughs> whether you fought in the UFC <laughs> or not. Dan. You were the last fight announced for UFC 305, and there was Izzy was pushing for you to be on the card. Um, there was a lot of speculation about your opponent. I think Drakkar Close was mentioned, uh, Ben El Dariush, and then uh, Bobby Green. We saw how that went at UFC 304. He said he was willing to uh, to fly down to Perth to uh, to fight you. Then it landed on Gamera. Was it hard for him to find you were an opponent? I mean, w- what was going? What was the names being mentioned to you before landing? No, on, no, on the I didn't have a single name mentioned to me, brother. That's what that's what my manager Ash is for. He he takes care of all of that. I just was. Um, I was just hell bent on being on this card. I just wanted to. I said, I'll fight any man on this card. Uh, get me the best bloke to put his hands up. All of those, like, obviously, people tag me and stuff, and then Close comes over, and I, was, I said, I'll smash his head off. Darius, I'll smash his head off too. Like, oh, there's no man I would not fight on this date. Didn't you say you were going to fight Charles here? Did you just make that up? No, well, I was actually, um, they they flew me over to do Vox shows. There's like a show they do, like the Fox, Fox Sports show. And we were like on the show. And then they asked if Volk had anything coming up. And he had to be like, nah, nah, I've got nothing coming up. And then they asked me. They're like, Dan, have you got anything coming up? And I don't want to be boring. So I kind of just spun a bit of a yarn. And I said, well, actually, I do have something to announce. Because see the UFC PR team having an absolute panic attack in the corner. But it worked out well. I think maybe it like uh maybe the like UFC saw how how excited all the fans were to have me a part of this card. And so it might have worked in the end. Might have worked. Were you was there any part of you that saw the excitement and then you were like, Oh maybe I will fight Charles in Perth? Oh yeah, yeah. This uh, it sounds good to me. It sounds good to all of the fans. Why not? Why not? Um, just as a gym, obviously you got a few boys on this card. Have you spoken about like everyone like winning on the card and what that feeling would mean for the gym? Um, or is that like a bit of extra motivation for everyone individually? Yeah, oh, like you kind of just focus on your own role. Like we've we've done it before. We've had the three wins in, in the in the same night before. There was um, the big show in, in Melbourne. I think it was me, Brad Riddell, and, and Israel all getting our hand raised in, in Melbourne. So we, we know what that feeling feels like. You know what I mean? We know what's at stake. But this is this is fighting, brother. It's it's just teeters on the edge of a knife. It can go it can go a thousand different ways. And uh, previously, before uh, Israel said that Eugene carries a knife around during training. Is that true? That's a hundred percent true. That's a hundred percent true. Is that just I like do motivation? like it does work. It does work. I definitely listen. I I have learned that if I've learned anything, is that if a man has a knife, I listen to what he's saying a lot more. Do you think that's more effective than a taser? I think so because the taser will hurt for a bit. I feel like a knife will hurt for a lot longer. Uh, just unrelated, obviously you said you're a big Warriors fan. Can you just get your thoughts on the season? Obviously a bit disappointing. Oh, so and then obviously next, year's our, next year's our year, boys. Like, there's no, no, there's no real stress about it. There's no real stress about it. Next year's our year, lads. Thank you. Boom.